OCO, and welcome to Exploring Cherokee History. My name is Kristen Mosier with Cherokee Nation Cultural Tourism, and today we're going to be exploring the new exhibit at the Cherokee National History Museum. Now featured at the Cherokee National History Museum is the exhibit Sequoia, an American icon. 2021 marks the bicentennial of the Cherokee syllabary and this exhibit highlights the syllabary's creator and his legacy. The exhibit is divided into three parts, his life, his idea, and his legacy. Each part is interpreted through a mixture of original artwork, historical record, and artifacts. Visitors will first explore Sequoia's life through biographical details as well as artistic interpretations of what he might have looked like. Sequoia was born approximately sometime between 1765 and 1775 in the Lower Appalachian region of Tennessee. Visitors might be surprised to know that we don't know exactly when Sequoia was born. He's perhaps one of the most famous historical figures about whom so little is known. One of the highlights of this exhibit is a life-size print of Sequoia based off of the painting by Charles Banks Wilson. The original painting was commissioned by the Oklahoma State Legislature in 1963 and is housed at the Oklahoma State Capitol. The Oklahoma Arts Council graciously gave us permission to create this life-size replica, and visitors will enjoy being able to take their picture with a life-size sequoia. Hanging next to this image is a photograph of sequoia's likeness as it was sculpted into the Library of Congress doors in 1930. Visitors might notice that this depiction of sequoia is vaguely reminiscent of an ancient Egyptian style, but that style was actually very prevalent during this time period artistically. Displayed are objects that help illustrate the story of Sequoia's life, such as a sculpture of Sequoia with his daughter, Ayoka, as they write their names in the dirt using Sequoia's syllabary. Also on display is a first edition of a biography that was published about Sequoia, written by American author George Foster in 1885. Illustrating how even in the late 19th century, people were fascinated by the story of Sequoia and the legacy that he left behind. Next, visitors will explore how Sequoia's idea of a written language for his people transitioned into the Cherokee syllabary that we know today. Finally, visitors will explore Sequoia's legacy and how his invention of the Cherokee syllabary impacted Cherokee Nation in the past and continues to impact us today. In this section, we have the proceedings from the dedication of Sequoia's statue in Statuary Hall at the U.S. Capitol in 1917. The panel, even the images that we selected for the panel, is meant to show his continuity. You know, his statue over in the Centennial Plaza. His syllabary being used in a cartoon. You know? I mean, that's amazing. This is part of the American story. This is part of world history. But it is also uniquely Cherokee. You're concluding your journey learning about Sequoia's life and his development of the syllabary, but what we want you to take away is how his legacy is still going, how his legacy is still prevalent today. We, we do still have our written language, even though it is endangered, we still have it, and it's one of the unique identifiers among all Cherokee. Because, you know, there's three federally recognized Cherokee tribes, but the syllabary is something that unites all of us, and it's so unique that even people who aren't Cherokee can see it and say, that's the Cherokee syllabary. The Sequoia and American Icon exhibit runs through the rest of 2021 in commemoration of the syllabary's bicentennial. Thank you for joining us today. What up?